starting off with uh, one that I have no idea anything about, uh, and I'm hoping that Stein does. Woodstake, issue number zero from SHP Comics. I've never heard of the publisher, never heard of this book, and it's got a pretty sweet cover, that's for sure. Yeah, this one just came out this week. It is, it's actually really, like, when you zoom in, it's actually really, the, the uh, and I saw the interior art of this as well. And it looks very similar to this. Like, and it, I think I tried to read the synopsis, synopsis on this, and it's like a, I don't know, it's like a four issue miniseries or something, but it's supposed to, I think it's supposed to be set in like the 60s. Um, and so it's supposed to have like that kind of like vibe of the 60s and dealing with like, you know, obviously with monsters and stuff like that from the 60s. But, um yeah i i'm like this has got to be like hyper low print run the art looks amazing um i don't know this this is one of those that like it was sold out at midtown um i'll be i'll be honest i think i saw um that it is still available and uh, on my comic shop so if you want this you can probably still get it for cover um but it did sell for upwards of ten dollars so i don't know i mean this is just one of the, this one looks like a fun one to have um with pretty cool looking cover art for sure yeah dude that is cool i i or my oh go ahead i was gonna say uh, it'd be interesting to see um what the story's like so. i was gonna say this reminds me of like a movie poster i don't remember which movie though it does, it does look very movie esque. That's for sure. Like um uh, uh I know, I know which one. It's um uh, Freddy Krueger, the Freddy Krueger poster. Right? Yeah. Oh, remember? Yeah. Yeah. I could see that now. Yeah. I was trying to remember which movie, but thank you. That jogged the memory. Yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, I feel like if if I if I pop into a, a store. Um, this week, and they still have this sitting there. I will definitely buy this one for off the shelf. Oh, I know what store to stop at. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Unless you got them all, Johnny. Yeah, I'm talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, man. All right. Uh, moving on, we have an oldie but goodie four kids walk into a bank. Specifically, the retailer sneak peek edition of issue one, which is uh, supposedly limited to 200 uh, retailers. And this comic book, when it came out, had so much buzz going for it. So many great covers. It was the start of the uh, retailer exclusive variant age. So there's probably like 20 retailer variants for these books. Um, I want to say it was one of the first CBSI variants that was ever done. It was just absolutely crazy. And then I think like they put out two issues and went on a hiatus for like a year before the third issue came out and just completely killed all the buzz. Am I right about that? Do you guys remember that? Um, this one came out after um, what was the, what was the first one from black mass that came out? Um, we can never go home. It was or... their, yeah, we can never go home. That was yeah. their first one, um, and they started doing, and that one took forever to get the five issues out or whatever. Um, and I think this might have been their second series that came out, something like that. Um, this one is actually limited to two hundred. It's serial numbered. They got a, it comes with like a a letter from Black Mass, that, and they're all actually serial numbered. That's awesome. Um, on on the preview, um, and it it's like a letter or something like that from the black max publishing to, or some, I feel like it's like that, but, um, the, the letter is, this is legit. No, I mean, it's really legit. <laughs> <laughs> on the back. I'm not joking for real, for real. <laughs> um, signed, yours truly black mass comics. <laughs> um, which is, which is still, I mean, like when we think back, I mean, one, this is like eight years ago, which or almost nine years ago now which is crazy. Um, but we can over to home is probably like 10 years old now, but, um, both of those stories were great. I mean, they like 
Black Mask literally had they had the magic right in their hands and they just crashed themselves. Like Yeah. I agree. That's what happens when you don't put out books on a timely basis, right? Yeah. Um, or don't put enough for people to, well, to grab to, did, right? Didn't this get um isn't Liam Neeson's name attached to this or is that where they I remember that. There was something he, Yeah, something came out like a couple of days ago where uh Oh really? A couple of days ago? Yeah. Oh. And that, and that's why this book is starting to to move. So interesting yeah. i was i was gonna say this book this uh, this uh sneak peek edition hadn't sold for like a long long time yeah the news just came like is there something online brian where you can because that's where the the heat is coming from yeah because wasn't cool. this option a long time ago yeah but now they i think they've got some some names now and you put liam neeson that that's uh he's a is this is that a signed copy of the sneak peek or is that a signed copy of just the regular A cut? Because they look exactly the same, other than the uh, the sneak peek actually says a sneak peek for our favorite retailers. Uh, shout out to my boy D, who in chat says that he picked one of these up at a charity swap for ninety nine pence. That's pretty sweet because yeah. this someone sold for one hundred fifty this week. Wow. That's good crazy. job, D. Yeah. Sold it quick. Uh, May 2019 to be adapted into a screenplay. Uh, in 2020, Deadline reports uh, Picture Start Media has won the rights. And then 2020, August 2024, Liam Neeson and talks to star with producer Point Grey Pictures. So there you go. Interesting. Yeah, that's big news. There was a ton of variants for issue number one. They did a lot of variants for issue number two. Some some cool shit, man. Very cool book. So someone was like, I haven't seen Liam Neeson in a film in a long time, so let's put him back in something. Yeah. All right, good shit. Uh, moving on, this would be something to actually look for. You know, if you guys see one of these uh, limited to two hundred book like this is. Um, something that you should try and grab if you can. All right, moving on. Next, we have a comic that is absolutely amazing. And uh, I want to shout out to all the um, stoners out there that collect this type of book. Gas Comics <laughs> from 1970. <laughs> nice. Um. Yep, it is what it is. That's right. This is a total uh, stoner book, man. Yeah. Um, the, there's a there's a uh, website called Comics Joint, and this is one of the books on there. So uh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, it says in the early '60s, uh, Austin, Texas native Jim Franklin studied drawing and painting at San Francisco. He returned to Texas in the mid '60s and helped launch the first psychedelic music club in Austin, called the Vulcan Gas Company. He served as the club's chief album cover artist and poster maker, and when Underground Comics hit in 1968, he jumped into action, and in 1969, he self-published a beautiful comic entitled Dillo Tunes. Immediately afterwards, he and his creative buddies put together a couple of underground comics called Gas Comics. Gas Comics number two is the only one of the two that is easy to is, is uh, able to be found quickly. Not easy, but number one is is pretty tough to find. So, um, yeah, very very interesting. That's dope. That uh, dope's been called gas since the seventies. Yeah, I did not know that. I yeah. thought that was just like a like a recent term that, but that's been using to describe you know that fire. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> man, if this one if this one's the easy one to find, then how much would number one? Because this is this sold for three hundred raw. This week, so how much if if number one is harder to find, how much would that sell for? That's a great question. Here's uh what number one looks like. So be on the lookout. Underground comics are super in right now. Like uh when I'm at San Diego, 
out of all the like vintage comic booths, there 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 was probably a hand less than a handful of them. Uh, two of them were full of underground stuff, uh, which is right up my alley. That's the stuff I love to collect, and I would love to find one of these. So I'd rather have number two than number one. Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Number one's a cool cover, but like number two. <laughs> it is awesome. So how could you shit. tell it was a stoner book? <laughs> <laughs> All I don't right. know. My eyes couldn't tell me either. <laughs> yeah. Moving on, we've got Flashpoint, Batman Knights of Vengeance, issue number one, the second printing. Uh and this is kind of interesting. Um there is a Batman Knights of Vengeance number one that has a different color background it's a white background instead of this but they did this weird thing where there's two volumes did you see that stein um what do you mean two volumes uh, i'll 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 show you here real quick after you uh you talk about it um yeah this one uh, okay for some reason I, I guess maybe i didn't even know there was a second print of this of this issue mm -hmm. um but Literally, there was a C, it was a CGC nine six of this book for one hundred and thirty five dollars. So, um, I, there was no other prior sales on a second print um, of any graded copies that I could find. Um, I don't know. Is this just? I mean, I'm sure somebody. I I usually pick up second prints, but I don't know if I've ever even seen this second print. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the only second print I remember from like the Flashpoint stuff was the Flashpoint issue. <laughs> <laughs> so there's Flashpoint Batman Night of Vengeance from 2022. That's a foreign comic. That's what it is. And then there's Flashpoint Night of Vengeance from 2011. This is the regular cover. And then, of course... That's the second print. And then it's a beautiful Dave Johnson no, piece. No, isn't the the regular covers the that same cover there as the uh foreign one? It, is it's it? this cover that is just white. It's not like the background's not red. Let me take a look. Hmm. They have it as I something different. That's weird. I don't know that. I've never seen that cover. Huh. That is interesting. Oh, what if that's just a stock image without the uh, without the trade and all that? Yeah, without without penguin and everything. Yeah, that's weird. That is weird. Hmm. So, yeah, that's hmm. that's what kind of made me go like, what what the heck? Because the this is the one I remember. Right. That's that's the that, and I like I said I didn't know there was a a red an all red second print. Yeah. That's interesting. Very cool. Well, 135 for a 96. Uh especially right now where everybody's it seems like most people are trying to stay away from uh graded books that aren't 98s, yet alone 96s. So, very cool. Interesting. Uh Thomas yep. Wayne was uh this was a big Thomas Wayne series, so I remember when Thomas Wayne got really hot there in the secondary market. Once they talked about uh, Keaton playing him, all the Thomas Wayne stuff shot up, and uh, this was a introduction of Thomas Wayne in this series, right? So, yep, good shit. All right, moving on, we have one of my all-time favorite books, Second Stage Turbine Blade. The Bag Online Adventures version by the band Coheed and Cambria. And I'm going to tell you guys something special about these books. This book, the one that Stein saw and had me put on the list, um, in which, and tell me if I'm wrong, <laughs> CGC 6.5 of this sold for 350 bucks. 350 yep. bucks. Kiss my ass, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so this is a very interesting story. So this story starts with this book, Second Stage Turbine Blade, The Bag Online Adventures, number one. But
But as you can see, it doesn't have an Evil Inc. logo on it. All it says is Coheed and Cambria in the upper left corner because these were given out or sold at their concerts back in 2004. And uh, that's where I've got, I got my copy. Uh, I picked up uh, my copy. My brother and his friends picked up a bunch of copies. And most of them are trashed because, you know, we were all a bunch of kids and, you know, young kids. And we didn't really think about comics. And they're just in terrible shape. Well, uh, about a year later, actually exactly a year later, in August of 2005, they decided to uh, reprint it under the Evil Ink Comics banner, and it was super low print run, very low print run. And then they did an issue number two along with it, which is also very rare. And this led to the Armory Wars comic uh, that is still being produced today. Um, and a lot of those are very low print run and sell for a lot too. And very interesting story about all this. In 2005, I went to San Diego Comic Con and I'm walking around and all of a sudden I'm looking at a booth and there's nobody standing at the booth there's, except for somebody standing behind it and it's Claudio Sanchez, the lead singer of Coheed and Cambria. And I'm like, what the hell? And he is very recognizable, very recognizable. And I'm thinking to myself, what the hell? Like nobody's standing over there talking to him. So I went over and I go, hey, man, I'm a big fan. I love your music. And and I, I, I can't believe that you put out a comic. I got it at your shows. And he's like, oh, man. I'm like, dude, they're so rare. And he's like, yeah. And he goes, I got a couple of available for sale uh, if you want them. And I'm like, yeah, give me them all. So I bought like six copies from him uh, at that con, had him sign them. Uh, which was nice, had him and Wes Abbott sign. I had Wes Abbott sign two and then had Claudio sign all of them. They were all the Evil Ink ones. Um, I sent in, uh, I think, two to get graded, and uh, I, have a nine, I have two nine sixes, and I have three of the uh, regular ones, which are these ones. The They call them the Cabbage, uh, produced by Cabbage Comics. And I have, like, six of the evil ink ones and i've been hoarding them for years and anytime they show up on ebay or anything for cheap i grab them just because i love the band i knew how rare they were but i love the band it's one of my favorite all-time bands and i always knew in the back of my head when people find out how rare these are they'll start selling and uh i don't think it's happened yet but it's on the almost 10 for a reason because we had a sale of 350 bucks for 6.5 and that's why you know why a 6.5 sells for so much because they're trashed for the most part because they're at giving away at concerts yeah yeah because we stopped by the Kohi booth again at san diego yeah I, I don't remember what the guys in the band look like were any of them there no but uh let me show you what uh claudia looks like um, it's funny because I don't know much about Evil Ink, but I wonder if that's their label. So this is Claudio Sanchez right here. Uh, uh, yeah, I definitely recognize him. Yeah. And very, very recognizable. And uh, I I don't know if Evil Ink is their label. Does anybody in the chat know if Evil Ink is Coheed and Cambria's label? Because that's one of the cool things. Me and you were walking around the final day at the con and just I didn't get a chance to really look at any of the booths at the con until the last day, so we're just kind of walking around, and um, there we see uh, the Evil oh. Ink booth, and yeah, uh, I just, they're I just, just hanging out. This. So I thought that was pretty freaking cool. Uh, they're still going strong to this day. They had uh, a bunch of you know uh, hard covers for the uh, Armory Wars stuff, which was very cool. So. Um, yeah. Evil Inc. is an independent publisher, record label, and house of creation owned by Coe Dan Cambria frontman Claudio Sanchez. There you go. So very, very cool uh, for all you Coheed fans out there. Ryan says, I just can't get past his voice. And I'll tell you what. The first time I heard Coheed on their first album, I was the same way, Ryan. I am, uh, I am not a fan of the band Rush. I think Geddy Lee has the worst voice in music and 
and when I first heard Coheed and Cambria, I thought to myself, this sounds like the lead singer of Rush. This is terrible. But then I listened to their second album, and it is a 10, an absolute 10. I fell in love with his melodies, um, and uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of him. So he also has got a, a side project that's really good, so check it out. All right, moving on to Acts of Vengeance Omnibus Volume 1, the John Byrne variant. And we're getting into some deep waters here with these omnibuses. Man, this one, ooh. Uh, yeah, this sold for $600 this week. Um, how, how rare are some of these omnibuses? Very rare. Omnibuy. Omnibuy. Yeah, on the buses. Yeah. I don't really know the plural of omnibus, but I mean, how rare are they? Well, they specifically do these like variant covers. And for a while there, they were just, they were like old school artists that would do them. And they're very rare and they sell for a ton. A uh, quick little piece of cornbread that um, a lot of people do know about, but not everybody. If you have like a, uh, um, a Bookman's or a Zio Records or a place that like buys secondhand books and stuff, go in and look for Marvel omnibuses and check to see if they're the variants because I think that the variants and omnibus collectors let me know they might have the there might be numbered on the inside too. So, um, mm. yeah, that's yeah. a good tip. Yeah. Oh, and there's online retailers too that sell. Um, where they specifically sell like omnibuses and stuff like that, that you can find for like 50% off of whatever the uh, uh, MSRP is on the back. So just as a heads up. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to Wacker23 says, the prize fighter Inferno is Claudio's side project. And that is true. And they are amazing. Or he's amazing. And uh, great name. And the thing I love about Claudio and, and uh, Coheed and Cambria is it's all one story. Um, all the lyrics are this story based on these two lovers and this sp giant space battle opera. So it's perfect for a, a comic book. Um, same with, uh, I think the prize fighter Inferno, but I could be wrong about that. So, Oh, Mastodon kind of does, kind of does the same thing too. Yeah. Where they're, but I think it's like what they do story per album. Yep. Uh, between the barrier and me is the same way as well. Yeah. Yeah. Super cool. Uh, Yeah. These omnibuses uh, can be crazy and um, really rare, especially some of the bigger titles. I remember like the X-Men ones they were putting out at first have some super expensive uh, copies out there. But yeah, concept albums. Thank you, Cosmic One. Yeah, concept albums. All right, moving on. Right as Hood Leaves. Danger Girl Trinity, <laughs> issue number one. Uh, J. Scott Campbell cover this week. Yeah, just the regular A cover. Um, this is not the first Danger Girl. It's as far as I know. I don't know if there's any new characters are in this. Um, it is a good. It is a good cover. Excellent. Um, but this is this book is forty dollars plus for just uh, like a side title of danger girl um i was shocked to be honest yeah. that this was this expensive there is Here's a sketch cover. Cover. get the fuck out of here yeah. i got 20 of these in my short box back here <laughs> <laughs> he always like boo jsc boo that man shame yeah shout out to aoa um yeah these rare some of these rare books like this that people don't know about you know they aren't, aren't but this one rare. this one's not really considered i mean i wouldn't consider this rare i mean well, it's a number one i think the print run is over ten thousand. really um yeah i mean this is not a rare book so that's why i'm like 40 40 plus for this that's i mean not that i would i wouldn't leave it in a box because i mean i just tend to know that if you can find any of these decent you know, J. Scott Campbell female covers, you know, you can at least get your money back buying the cover, but 40? Oof. Yeah. Because someone thought it was from Trinity Comics. 
Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> um, I doubt that. You know what's really funny is is I actually um, looked at something on Danger Girl a couple weeks ago, um, and I didn't realize there has not been a new Danger Girl comic in like nine years. Wow, has it really is, been that long? Yeah, it's really been that long. Um, which is crazy. I mean, like, I, I'm shocked that. I mean, with all the with all these other titles making comebacks and stuff like that, how has this one not made a comeback? Maybe because he's not ready yet. I mean, he wasn't writing this anyway. He wasn't. Well, not this issue, no. but wasn't he doing it no, originally? He, he did. He did the original the, yeah. the the original original series, but then he all these offshoots. He didn't do any of those. He well, John did Royal covers, did but... the interior art on this, which is basically J. Scott Campbell Jr. So it's, it's probably. True. It probably depends on who owns the IP now at this point in time, because I really doubt that IDW still owns it. Um, yeah, after all these and, years. Yeah, I mean, because it's kind of like what uh, what Jim Lee is trying to do too, right? That he's trying to sell one of his um, IPs to to Marvel right now. I don't remember which one, so don't ask me. Wildcats. He already did that. Divine Right, maybe Cats? Max Faraday. Divine Right. Uh, it's it's one of those image books or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Well, there you go. Moving on to Back to the Future issue number one from 2015. There's a ton of variants for this issue, but this one's actually pretty cool. This is the MCM Comic Con Diamond UK Previews exclusive variant. That shows the... Uh, that's a lot of words. Know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Obviously, I'm not. I'm not from the UK, so I don't. Um, I don't know if these are plentiful in the UK or not. But, um, I wish they didn't have that big, huge previews stamped right there on the tailpipe. Like, yeah. Could you not have just put that? Could you not have put that on the back cover? Yeah. Um, but it's. How else are you going to st distinguish the regular cover from the the <laughs> the MCMCC UKPE? <laughs> um, I love the yeah, this... PX though with the British flag the behind it, the Union Jack behind uh, it. Jack, yeah. Um, yeah, this one nine eight sold of two for two fifty on this one. Again, I don't know how many are printed. I don't know. I, mean, I, I don't know if they're really plentiful in the UK. Um, Obviously, if you've got one, it's a nine A. You should you should you should grade it clearly. Yeah, yeah. Blue green artifacts in the house. What's going on, brother? Ronnie, how you doing, brother? Hope you're feeling uh, a little bit better. Uh, I got to reach out to you soon. Appreciate everybody that's hanging out with us. 176 hanging out with us live tonight so far. Let's get into the next almost ten book. This is a weird one. The final almost 10 book of the night. No, we got one more. One more. Uh, Marty Stewart's Marty Party in Space. A <laughs> crazy interesting book that was produced by Marvel that I have to know more about. <laughs> I This is like prestige. This is like prestige format. Um, it had I think it had a six dollar cover price. I have no idea what is going on on this cover. It's got like a priest and Scooby Doo and um, aliens, Michael Jackson and Coolio and yeah, I mean yeah, there's all kinds of stuff going on on this cover. Um, That's Marty Stewart, yeah. not Michael Jackson. <laughs> oh, my bad. It, lo it looks like Michael Jackson. Um, <laughs> I mean, he's gonna fool me with that red singer. jacket and the zippers. So. Yeah. <laughs> The mullet's not uh, helping either. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, Mr. Longshirt, what's going on, brother? What's up, Ed? I, I mean, have you guys ever seen this? <laughs> no. Never. I mean, it's a, Never. it's a Marvel book. How in the world is that possible? Yeah. Why wasn't this blow book of the weekend? <laughs> it's, it's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. But it's. I think it's a custom Marvel book. It's like Marvel will do these custom books. If you pay him enough, uh -oh. especially back in the day. So he probably did this to sell out his concerts, you know, 
Who's Same Marty that, Stewart? Who is that? Is he's that a, a famous, uh, yeah, country singer, I believe. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Marty's party that. in space. <laughs> wow, that's um, funny. Dude. Well, this sold for this sold for fifty bucks. So I I don't know who has it, but uh, that's crazy. Marty finally ran out, and he was like, oh, "I got to buy one for myself and hug again." <laughs> <laughs> man i want to know what's in the guts of this like why is it a party in space to begin with like i mean i understand you know being higher than giraffe pussy but like this is a next level right here so all right moving party on could be the dogs taking acid nice. yeah yeah <laughs> our final almost 10 book of the week Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Street Collectors Edition, which is a mini comic. Uh, this is from 1988, and I don't know anything about this. The only thing I know is this is it's is like mini comic size. This is very small. Um, the uh, the copy that sold on CGC was a 9.0, and it sold for 200, and it it takes up like half the the CGC case, so it's very very small. It was um, a fan membership book, fan club membership book. So the cover is terrible. Like, yeah. like <laughs> tremendously terrible. <laughs> um, first, they're all wearing they're all wearing the same bandanas. The That's ones throw back to the original, though, the one's heads cut off. I don't like you can't even see his head. It's behind the, the trade dress. Um, Dude, it was oh, a make a wish. All right, here we go. Here's some information about it. Shout out to Key Collector. Eight-page black and white comic book included in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan club membership kit. Obtained by mail after sending in an order form that was included with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Playmates action figures plus $15. It included in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles branded kit was this comic book, a sticker, a numbered membership card, an orange and white bandana, which would be awesome, uh, a 12-month membership to the Chaos Chronicle newsletter and a letter from the president of the marketing company that produced the kit. Yay. So there you go. 